Welcome to the March the 28th, 1988 taping for the April the 4th presentation of It Happened in Grand Prairie, our history show that brings back memories of Grand Prairie of the past and also brings us up to date on some of the happenings of those that have been a part of history in Grand Prairie, Texas. This is our history tape number 65 and we are delighted today to have a very wonderful guest with us. Dr. Albert Plattner. And Dr. Plattner, we want to welcome you to the show, young man. Thank you. Good to see you again, Ruthie. Good to see you too, Dr. Plattner. Dr. Plattner, the name is synonymous with doctors, the first hospital in Grand Prairie, Texas, clinics, ranches, and many other good things. But we want to open our show a little bit and just chat a while about the Plattner, I would guess you would call it the dynasty of the Plattners and those that came to Grand Prairie. And would you like to look out into your camera and tell us about the Plattners when they first came to Grand Prairie, the ones that came first and the ones that followed. And, and let's have a little bit about the history of the Plattners, would you? Fine. We moved to Grand Prairie in August 1940. And when I say we, that means that my older brother Dr. Amel and myself. We had just completed our internship at the Wilshire Hospital in Los Angeles, California. While there, everyone told us, if you spend a year in California, you'll stay. But we said, no, we're going to Texas. Texas was a land of opportunity, and we knew very little about it, but we knew that uh, we would start our first practice someplace in Texas, and we didn't know where. So we made a trip from Coffeyville, Kansas, that's our hometown, and first went to Denison, and then on to Dallas. In uh, Dallas, we uh, met Dr. Sam Sparks, who owned his own hospital, and he said, I have the ideal location for you two upcoming doctors, and uh, I want to send you to some place in the Metroplex, so you have the choice of uh, three towns. Arlington, Irving, or Grand Prairie. Each town was 1,500. So we looked them over and uh, decided that uh, Grand Prairie was the best, but we still weren't uh, completely satisfied. So we made a trip to South Texas. We went to Corpus Christi, and this was a hot summertime, and it was so humid we couldn't stand it. So we said, we'll try Alice, and it was even worse. So we said, let's go back to uh, Grand Prairie. So we went back to Grand Prairie, and by, by a, a, stro a stroke of luck, or what we call it divine providence, the good Lord was, was uh, smiling upon us that day in the Dallas Morning News was headlines that said, North American Aviation from Los Angeles to build in Grand Prairie and hire 20,000 people. We said, well, that's made up our mind for us. We'll be the first to go there. And uh, we decided to get started immediately. So we were the first business to uh, go to Grand Prairie after the announcement was made. All right, now, when you decided to come to Grand Prairie, Texas, you and Dr. Amel, did you have a place in mind where you were going to office? Or, and where did you finally open up your office for the very first time? Well, our first stop was uh, Miller Drug, and Dewey Miller welcomed us and, uh, and uh, showed us around Main Street. And we found that the telephone company had just moved and vacated a building where the uh, present Lenox Hotel is located. Do you happen to have a photograph of your first little clinic there that yes. was the old telephone company? If you can center that for the camera, I know it's a small photograph, but that would be wonderful to get that on camera. And that is the old telephone office that That's was on right. Northwest 2nd Street. That's right. And I happened to uh, just ride by on my horse on a Sunday. I, the office was not open, and that's why the horse is on the picture. All I've right. always loved horses, and All I had right. a ranch south of town. All right, now that's the one with your on the horse? That's right. Uh, one Sunday, when we built the uh, new hospital, I drove by, rode by the clinic, and uh, I had an emergency call. A man had a heart attack, and my car was at home. 
So I had to get there in a hurry, and I didn't know how to get there except by horseback. So this was the first and last house call I made by horseback. That's wonderful. And that must have been 47 years ago. All right, now you and Dr. Amel did house in this very first clinic in Grand Prairie, Texas on Northwest 2nd Street. How long did you all remain there, Dr. Platt? Uh, just about one year. Just about one year. One year. And in the meantime, Dr. Amel wanted to be busy. Mm -hmm. So uh, he read in a medical journal that the doctor in Jewett, Texas had a heart attack and died and they were begging for someone to come there and take care of the practice in the town and the surrounding community. No Would you doctor. tell us where Jewett, Texas is located? Yes. All right. It's halfway between Dallas and uh, Houston and a few miles west of Buffalo. Wonderful. All right. And did he go on to uh, Jewett, Texas then, sir? That's an interesting story, too. He knew nobody in the town. I knew nobody in the town. We said, we'll go down and look at it. He took his doctor bag, and he had only $12 in his pocket. I took him down to Main Street, and he said, I'll stay. I said goodbye to him. He didn't have a car. And in a week's time, he called me and said, I've established a practice. I have lots of patients. I've had a bunch of emergencies. I've lined up a few OBs. He said, I love it here. I'm going to stay. Wonderful. That was uh, 1940. And then you were in Grand Prairie, Texas, all alone in this That's brand right. new clinic. And well, uh, in 41, I, I finally developed a practice and built the first hospital in Grand Prairie in 1941 at uh, 813 East Main. All right, show us the picture of the okay. very first hospital in Grand Prairie, Texas. That was 1941, and it was a seven-bed hospital. All right, what stands in that place now, do you know? No, the building has been torn down. So and there's just, nothing there? There's nothing there. All right. That has been demolished. Our very first hospital gone by the ways of the world, wouldn't you right. know? All right. And then how long did you remain in this very first hospital in Grand Prairie? And we who operated, joined you there? All right. Uh, we operated the hospital for uh, 18 years. But uh, we had a tremendous practice after a few years. So I told Dr. Hamel that I needed some help. So he said, I hate to leave these people. So he waited uh, one to two years until our younger brother, Dr. Herman, finished his internship. And Dr. Herman took over the practice in Jewett. And Dr. Amel joined me in Grand Prairie. That was sort of like climbing the ladders uh, out of like that, that to Jewett and then on one, to Grand one Prairie. One step Texas. after the other, four, four brothers. So uh, Dr. Herman stayed in Jewett then for about six years. And he waited for our sister, who had graduated from uh, Kansas University Medical School. And she wanted to start in a small town. And what was her name? Lillian. That's Lillian. Lillian, who later became a psychiatrist. All right. And she started in Jewett, and then Sorry. Dr. Herman came Dr. to Herman Grand Prairie? Dr. Herman joined us. So there were three Dr. Platners then in Grand Prairie. Oh. And Lillian, I, I really felt sorry for her because she was young, out of school. She was the only doctor in town. She was a woman, had to make house calls alone at night by herself, mm -hmm. more or less a dangerous situation, mm -hmm. and treated all kinds of emergencies. So she can tell you some interesting stories about that someday. All right, now, did the, another doctor come along the way after Dr. Herman? Yes. All right. So uh, after Lillian went to uh, Kansas University, Mm -hmm. uh, our youngest brother, Dr. Don, studied medicine and graduated and interned, and then he joined the armed services. So uh, he was stationed in Germany for two years, and Dr. Emil and I got to visit him over there. How so wonderful. we talked him into joining us. So that made four brothers at uh, one place, which was, I think, the most unusual setup in the state of Texas. Four brothers practicing together, and uh, three of us are DOs, doctors of osteopathy, and one an MD, and that was unusual in itself. So uh, we uh, uh, took care of just general medical cases, and with only seven beds, we needed more room. So we decided to build a new place. All right, now, before we go into the new place and the announcement of that, would you take this family portrait that you have and yes. let our camera see if it can get a good shot of all of the four 
doctor male physicians and the one female and your mother that's sitting in the middle. Yes. Would you identify those for our camera and for those that, for our historic tape? Please, right, Dr. Platten. Our mother, of course, was on the bottom there. All right. She lived with us before her death, and she lived to be 95 years old. How splendid. And uh, she had six children, and all of us doctors except one. Now then, uh, this one here is Alta, who was a school teacher. So the rest of us, all doctors, starting on my left, this is Dr. Herman, right. then Dr. Amel, mm -hmm. then Alta, then Dr. Lillian, then myself, and then Dr. Don. That is a wonderful family portrait. And your father, did he join you before his death here in Grand Prairie, Texas? Yes, he, he had broken his hip in Coffeyville, mm -hmm. and we thought he was going to die. And uh, we flew up to see him, and we, we uh, put him on an airplane and flew him down put him in our hospital and we treated him there for years and he was the longest resident patient that we had in our hospital that and he stayed wonderful. there until uh, we closed the hospital and we put him in a nursing home and he finally died in a nursing home. Mm -hmm. That was wonderful. You gave him long loving care. Yes, didn't we you? did. That's All right. right. Now let's get to this brand new hospital that right. you built here in Grand Prairie. <laughs> Okay. And I believe that is an addition of the Grand Prix banner, which is probably a collector's item also. And on the front of that is your brand new beautiful hospital. And can you give us the address of that? 322 Northeast 8th. All right. And, and uh, that's where all four of the Dr. Plattners housed their offices. That's right. We had mm -hmm. both a clinic and a hospital, and that was a 25-bed hospital. 25 beds. 25 beds, and we operated that for 16 years. Mm -hmm. So the combination of the two hospitals, we were in the hospital business for 34 years. All right. Is there anyone carrying on that business at this time? So when we closed the hospital, uh, we continued with the clinic. But uh, Dr. Amel, unfortunately, died when he was 70, and uh, I retired. 13 years ago, and Dr. Mm -hmm. Herman retired a year or two ago, mm -hmm. and now Dr. Don is still there working part-time, and Dr. Buckaloo is the main doctor there now. So the clinic has been operational for 48 years. Oh, that is a wonderful tenure for the very first clinic and the very first hospital that came to Grand Prairie, Texas, That's and right. especially after North American Aviation. That's right. All right. And we had an agreement with the city of Grand Prairie. They wanted to to uh, build a community hospital. Mm -hmm. So uh, they, they had to show uh, that there was a need for that. And in order to show the need, Dr. Stewart, our friend, had his own hospital, and we had a hospital. We said, if Grand Prairie wants their hospital, we will close our hospital down, and then we will send our patients to the Grand Prairie Community Hospital, which is now the Dallas-Fort Worth Medical Center. That was some gift to Grand Prairie, Texas, that the Platners and Dr. Stewart closing down their hospital to open up one for Grand Prairie, Texas. So Grand Prairie is proud of their community hospital, and they should be. I think it's over 100 beds and a very successful institution. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, is there anything else you want to tell us about the hospital before we go into maybe some of the entrepreneurial things that you have uh, been into? not only while you were a doctor, but since you have been retired. And is there anything else you want to tell us about the hospital? Any real special uh, memento? I might tell you one interesting case. All right, tell us. Of course, one. I had hundreds of interesting cases. Yes. And uh, this, this one day I was uh, in the emergency room, and this little 11-year-old girl and a lot of her family came rushing into the emergency room, and they, they, they were yelling. All of them were scared to death. They said, lockjaw. Her, her mouth was wide open, and she couldn't close it, and she couldn't talk. And uh, they all thought it was lockjaw. And uh, I thought for a minute, and I thought, well, with uh, lockjaw, that's tetanus. The jaw is closed tightly, and the mouth is shut. Couldn't be lockjaw. Mm -hmm. So I took her in the emergency room with a nurse, and I wrapped uh, uh, washcloths around my thumbs. I pushed on her back molars and pulled up on her chin, and it snapped like that. It was a dislocated jaw, and the whole family smiled and felt relieved. 
They even had carloads of friends who thought they were all going to have to take a shot of tetanus for preventative. And it turned out that it was just a dislocated jaw. Dr. Platner, your family has been very, very special. And all of your personal family, uh, most of them were born in and around Grain Prairie. Tell us about your personal family, your, your children. Well, I have uh, two boys that are living here. All right. All right. Alan is the vice president of Sergeant Sal. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Sal was my patient many years ago, mm -hmm. and he started his own business from scratch. And he's an example of uh, the entrepreneur system. That's it. And uh, he started with nothing, and now he developed a, a famous business. Very famous. And uh, my son is the vice president of the company. That is great. All right, and you have another son. Yes, his, his name is Arden. All right. And uh, he's in management with Frito-Lay, mm -hmm. one, one of the uh, nationally known companies, mm -hmm. probably internationally known. Mm -hmm. And he and his wife are known far and wide in Grand Prairie, Texas, and probably in the county and in the state for their interest in historic preservation. Aren't That's you proud right. of them? That's right. I am proud. Gail is interested in, in uh, everything historic about Grand Prairie. So, and she's also interested in restoration of old buildings and, and antiques and uh, programs like this. All right. Uh, Arden's wife, you have not mentioned her and, and their little family. Yeah, with... that's Gail. All right. Okay. She's, she's the one that's in the All right. Now, how, the about their, how about your grandchildren? Okay. I have seven grandchildren. All right. And uh, let's see, five of them live here in Grand Prairie. All right. Name me the ones that belong to Gail and Arden. Okay. All right. Celia. Celia. Isn't she beautiful? Beautiful. You're right. She's a beautiful girl. Yes. And a sweet girl along with it. All right. And uh, then there's Aaron. Mm -hmm. He's a soccer player. Oh, he is really busy. So, some, sometimes he's, he's the best player on the team, sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then the little girl is about uh, five years old. That's, that's Kendall. Miss Kendall, and I call her Miss Kay, and she's my very good friend. She's well, precious. that's great. Okay. All right, now how about Alan's wife and his children? All right, Alan is married to Voda, who also works uh, for Sergeant and Sal. Wonderful. And uh, they have two children, Reagan and Courtney. Re Reagan and Courtney. And they live mm -hmm. close by on Church Street. In Grand Prairie, Texas. Right. That is wonderful. Dr. Platner, it's wonderful for you to tell about your personal family. Now, tell us about when you got out of the doctor's office and uh, then you looked around for a place to live. First, you lived, I, I believe, on Oak Street. Yes. And then you branched yes. out. Right. Well, tell us about while the I was branch. on Oak Street, I became interested in quarter horses. All right. And I joined the association one year after it was formed. Mm -hmm. And my original broodmare was number 711, which you know is a lucky number. Oh, that's a lucky number. And she was a, a race mare that had won a futurity, and she was bred to the fastest quarter horse in the state of Texas. So I knew I would get a race horse mm -hmm. from that mating, and uh, I did. This was before there were any strict rules in Grand Prairie, and I kept the mare in my backyard on, on Oak, Oak Street. Street. And she foaled a little stallion I named Whizaway. Mm -hmm. Whizaway became my number one sire. And he sired grand champions at Halder, racehorses, triple A racehorses, that I raced all over the western United States. All right. And outran some good racehorses with them. Good. And also sired the number one cow pony in America. I say that because he won the all-around performance at the major shows. But officially, he was officially written up and pictured in the Quarter Horse Journal as the number one calf roping horse in America. Does it have a name? Do you remember yes, the name? Yes, I named him Dr. Cutter. Dr. Cutter? Dr. Cutter. Oh, that's And, and he had the best disposition. All the cowboys in the arena said that horse has the best disposition of any stallion they'd ever seen. And one reason is, my daughter, who lives in Sweet Home, mm -hmm. when she was 10 years old, she broke this stallion, and she gave him TLC. She's a registered Ten, nurse. Tender and, loving and, care. And that's how she started off, with tender loving care. She gave it to this stallion. And he was so gentle, you couldn't tell him from a gelding. And your daughter's name? 
That, that is uh, Pamela. 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 Wonderful. All right, now you obviously could not keep all of these race horses and quarter horses on Oak Street. Where'd you move then? Okay, I bought a ranch south of Grand Prairie. Okay. In fact, uh, you know, I was in such cooperation with Dr. Amel, together we bought Dukes Murray Acres, a hundred acre estate uh, above the Trinity River. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a fabulous estate. I own half, he owned half. And he bought half of my place south of Grand Prairie. Later we divided, I took the South Ranch and he took the North Ranch. Well, they later changed the course of the Trinity River and put in the toll gates for Grand Prairie through our property. Right so, through your property. So when you enter uh, Highway 30 now, while mm -hmm. you drive over our original old property. That's right. The original Where the property. toll gates used to be for the turnpike. Hmm, that's exciting. But you did keep the ranch south of town, and that's on what street in Grand Prairie, Texas? Okay, that's about 1600 Southeast 8th, so it's close mm -hmm. to town. I bought it close in because uh, I wanted a place close to my practice, and then I knew something close to town would have more value mm -hmm. in the future. So it had three highways around it, so narrow that when I drove my car to town, sometimes the limbs on the trees would brush the side of my car and now that's a seven lane highway yes and that was back in the 1940s that yeah, that, that was still that. a gravel road in that that's area. right well it was slightly paved slightly paved so uh three roads around it all were widened the, the mm -hmm. county took 10 acres to widen the roads mm -hmm. so they made main highways on mm -hmm. on all three sides of the ranch and this ranch out there who were, who were your ranch hands who did a lot of this good work well, for you well, I, I'll tell you one thing, a lot of people don't know. You know, you've heard about the uh, youngest chief of police in the state of Texas. His first job was with me when he was in high school. That's Freddie Conover. All right. He worked for me on the ranch, and uh, that's where he, he got some of his ranching experience mm -hmm. and uh, later became chief of police. Here in Grand Prairie, Texas. That's right. Oh, that is wonderful. And you raised all of these quarter horses out on the ranch here in Grand Prairie, Texas. Was that number one uh, cow horse that you told us about, Mr. Cutter, was he born in Grand Prairie, Texas? Yes, he was, Dr. Cutter. Dr. Cutter. I thought he would probably be a cow pony and a cutting horse. Mm -hmm. And being a doctor, I put the doctor on there. So Dr. Mm -hmm. Cutter fit him pretty well because in all around performance, well, he was a cutting horse. Well, that's exciting to have that kind of a legacy from Grand Prairie, Texas. You know that Lancaster is famous for their racehorse, and we'll have to go for broke on this one and see if we can't get up something for Dr. Cutter. That sounds a, like Good a very idea. exciting historical point. All right, now, all the time that you and the four doctors were working together in, in this area, did all of them settle in Grand Prairie, Texas? Did all of them live in Grand Prairie? Let's see. Ever live here at one time, Dr. Herman, Dr. Do Don? Dr. Herman bought the place across from my ranch uh, when he moved here. All right. And he came here in about 48, and he bought uh, over 100 acres, and uh, he donated some of it to the city for Cottonwood Park. All right. And he still owns probably 100 acres down there. That's great. And how about Dr. Don? And Dr. Don, he owned... Uh, land uh, on Corn Valley, yes. down, down close to 80. Yes. Quite an acreage. And uh, he kept part of it, sold part of it, some of it's business and some of it's residential. And he still owns some of it. But he lives up in the middle and of Grand Prairie, Texas. he lives right there. in the heart of town with about two and a half acres. And it seems like a country place, but it's right next to the old Safeway store. And it seems like a country home right in town. All right. Dr. Plattner, I know that you've seen a lot go by the pike during all the years that you've been here. I know that you came because of the North American plant. Are there other things that uh, seem to come into your mind that caused the, the great growth of Grand Prairie, Texas? Do you think that was the motivating factor? Well, uh, of course, when we came here, everything south of town was just a, more or less a cotton field, and they hadn't even started the plant. And the, and the plant naturally was the number one factor in the growth of Grand Prairie. And it should have been in Grand Prairie, but Dallas slipped out here and took it in, which is another story. That is another story. 
I'd like to ask you this. Uh, being a, a very important businessman in Grand Prairie, a physician, uh, who are some of the important movers and shakers that you remember since 1940, uh, bringing up the history of Grand Prairie, Texas? Some of the people that impressed you in Grand Prairie as being good leaders. You mentioned Dewey Miller. That's right. Helping you when Number you one, came. he was the first one that impressed me. A, a wonderful person, and he's still living here, close to where uh, my son lives. Yes. I think on Church Street. Yes. Okay, there was Hanson Brundage. All right. Who headed the newspaper. All right. And I knew him very well, also his brother. All right. And in fact, I have a picture, an old Rotary Club picture. And you were a Rotarian? And I was a Rotarian for a while. And uh, later, when I was so busy and had too many irons in the fire, I dropped out. But I have that picture, and in that picture, I don't know, about 15 or 20 men. And it seems to me like all of them have died except about three. I see. But it, it recalls old memories mm -hmm. of all the old timers in Grand Prairie. You mentioned A.W. Sowell, and we have two more minutes left on our tape, and we want you to say anything you'd like to about Grand Prairie, Texas. But before we do, I want to thank you for delivering my very first baby, Miss right. Zanna. And Zanna lives in Brenham, and I'm sure she would send her regards. And I know there are other ladies in Grand Prairie, Texas that take their hat off to you for being the deliverer for our children here in Grand Prairie uh, for so many years. And we want well, to thank strange you Strange as it seems, I remember you back in 1941. That was and back I in the good old days. I remember your little girl, and I remember how beautiful she was. And I assume that she's still beautiful. She and still I, is beautiful. I'd like beautiful. to see her if she comes up here sometime. All right. Now, tell us just anything you'd like to in the last minute and a half that we have left. Just look out into your camera. Tell them what you think about Grand Prairie, Texas. Well, Grand Prairie has been good to us. It was just uh, 1,500 when we came here. And I personally delivered 1,500 babies, so I doubled the size of the town. And my brothers t delivered the total for the four of us, I think, is around 5,000 babies that we delivered in this community. So, uh, uh, You made a definite impact on it, right? Definitely. And, and we, we have lots of friends, lots of great friends here. Although I don't live here all the time, I spend part of my time in California. But my home is still Grand Prairie. I love Grand Prairie, and I like to come back here. And I spend every spring and every fall I spend here. And I go to California in the hot summertime and the cold wintertime. Right, and you still have a nucleus of that famous Platner Ranch south of town, right? I have, right now I have 30 acres on Southeast 8th. Wonderful. So some, someday that will develop, and I'll, I won't have it anymore, but it's been a large part of my life. Dr. Platner, Dr. Albert Platner, it's been a delight to have you with us today. Well, it's been great being with you. And thank you very much for being on our show. Yes. And this is Ruthie Jackson reminding you that history is as we live and do.